get it. I'll get it recording, uh, and then mm. I'll. Let's go. Let's get. Let's do this. I'm ready to go. Okay, right. Let me just uh, let me just get it on Facebook, and then. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how this works. Okay. Uh, Tobias, are you joining us as well on this one? Sorry, was that to me? No, that was. Can you? I might. Do I need to be a little bit louder? I can turn myself up a little bit. Hang on. No, you're all right. Am I all right? No, I'm just saying, are you joining us? I thought I, thought I saw Shabazz in the corner of Katie's screen. Oh, yeah. Hey, Shabazz. Are you online as well? We're ready to go. So let's, should we just, I mean, it's one o'clock. Let's just get this, literally get the, the road on the show, or should we say the footpath on the show? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, let me just get it onto, yeah. Onto Facebook, and then we're ready to go. I'm just going to okay, good stuff. And then I'll, I'll have to go outside and just get a signal out. Yeah, there. well, I'll just do a little bit of an introduction. Yeah, that's on fine. Facebook. Yeah. Oh no, let me just tick out all the things. Um, I should save my energy, really. I shouldn't really be um, moving now because I'm going to be knackered by the end of this. I'm sure. I'm impressed that you can do that much multitasking. I'm not sure I could be a uh, treadmilling and talking at the same time. <laughs> Okay, well, the idea is that you're, we're getting into a, a rhythm. So this, the whole point of this is that we're going to have a rhythm for this whole... Yeah, it's live now on Facebook. Okay, so. The walking rhythm. So, okay, so hello, Facebook people. Welcome to the very first virtual walkie -okey. This is a little bit of an experiment. We are going to be walking and talking. Um, this, the, the whole point of this is to maybe change the rhythm of thinking and walking. I can see there's a lot of people out there walking. Hello, everybody. Um, I wish I could be out in the studio, but we've got too many kind of <laughs> knobs and devices. Um, hello, everybody. Hi. To drag all this kit out into the, into the outside world. However, I've tried to get that same rhythm just by simply walking and talking although i'm kind of sitting and walking and talking at the moment um <laughs> so this is an experiment and um, the interesting thing here is going to be is will this change the rhythm of the conversation so it's really interesting for us um so this is an experiment and please bear with us if there's any kind of technical glitches um because we're on the cutting edge of technology here in a way it's only down to covid and lockdown that we've kind of we're all familiar with this Zoom technology where we can do this. So in a way, we're kind of, you know, making the best use of the situation. So I just want to say hello to everybody. Um, I don't know, Rick, are you ready with the visuals yet? Yeah. Yeah. This might be a bit difficult for people to Definitely see on yeah. their phones. Um, oh. But what we're going to do before we start off this conversation is just recap what we did with the last couple of conversations. Um, mm -hmm. So, which ones have you got queued up first, Rick? The uh, everything you got everything. So, um, hang on. Let me just. I'm just gonna have to go big. So, is this from session one, Rick, or session two? Um, right. So, this is all about exercising on Zoom, and we're kind of doing this, but we're, the difference here is we're not. Come on. From me. Oh, no. can, can everyone please mute themselves? You better get him on the leads if he's vicious. Hang on, I'm gonna. Can everyone, if uh, can everyone just mute themselves if uh, for now, just because there's going to be a lot of noise out there because we're going out in the. And if you when you come to speak, please unmute yourself. Right. So um, this is all about doing exercise on Zoom. This is about kind of remote exercising. We're kind of doing this in a different way. Let's just move on. Let's flick through some of these, some of these conversational tidbits. This is about brain training. And um, I can relate to that now. I feel a little bit like that brain right now. Um, let's move through. This is about being kind of trapped indoors. I mean, luckily we've moved on from that now. This was a few months ago. Um, let's move on, Rick. This is where we're a little bit low in motivation. And I guess this is the thing, in a way, 
where we've gone with the walkie-okie, we've gone for the people that are a bit more motivated to get out there and do some activities. Some nice, I can see some nice images on the screen of uh, where people are, are walking and, uh, and hopefully listening as well. Um, so how do we get people more motivated? There was a big question. I think there's still a big question hanging out there. Um, let's move through, Rick. This is about cooking as a form of activity. Um, and, you know, stretching the sourdough, the sourdough furlough, as it was called back then. I mean, this seems more appropriate than ever. This is like, when is this lockdown going to end? And we've got Rick that's got day 512 there. It doesn't seem so preposterous anymore. Um, let's just flick through. Um, this is, this, well, look, this, things have changed here. This is like places of worship being closed but now they're not anymore. Um, but there's still obviously restrictions about people going into those places and uh, social distancing. Uh, let's m move on. The w <laughs> we're still on, maybe somebody on their walk today will find the route to normality, but we're still looking for it. Um, will it be a new normal? Um, this one I think speaks for itself. Uh, the couch potato culture. Um, this is all. This is actually. We're now moving on to, to the second session of chat we had. Um, this is about all those get fit posters are not really helping you when it's super, super. What's the word? Rips people in the posters. So this is more of a realistic poster to get people to the gym. Uh, let's move on, Rick. This is someone towing a big sack of money. I'm not quite sure what the point of this is. I, I, I'm sure it was relevant back in the day, but uh, what was it? Can you remember what this one was about, Rick? Money, money as a motivator, was it? Oh, that's right. It was the prohibitive cost of exercise. Um, but this particular rugby player has turned that into a plus in a way. Um, uh, this one, this is kind of, a, in a way, the inspiration of what we're doing now, I suppose, isn't it? Um, walking and talking. Um, is that, is there any more to this, Rick? Together, uh, oh, that's, no, that's just Chris moving, moving in. Okay, I thought that was, I, I, was, I was like, that's a very minimal visualization. Um, I'm just going to mute people if I can, just because um, there's a, there is going to be a lot of, um, actually, I'm not. Sophie, could you make me the co-host so that I am able to mute people? Just people, if you can, just be on mute because uh, there's going to be a lot of background noise for this session. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's only you and Chris that are unmuted. Okay, good stuff. Um, so, all right, so let's just go back this. Let's, uh, let's have a look at this again. So this is uh, trying to find motivation in the kitchen. Um, this is kind of like this in a way we're starting to move to sort of ideas. This is kind of like the fitness rating of Pendle as a whole. Could there be a big, some kind of indicator of how fit Pendle is as an area or, you know, almost like a sort of health rating, uh, that everyone can see. Um, was that the last one, Rick? Uh, yeah. So that, that's kind of gives you an idea of where we are so far. Um, those that have joined us a bit later, um, welcome to this experiment, which is all about walking and talking. Um, I'm getting properly onto this. I'm going to try and do this without making too much noise. So that's where we are so far with the conversation. Will this particular uh, way of walking and talking change the conversation? That's what I would like to know. But has anyone 
want to respond to what they've seen or heard so far? Rick's got me going pretty quickly there. Uh, maybe slow that one down. Slow me down, Rick. I'm getting dizzy already. Um, so, yeah. So, does anyone want to kick off any response to some of those visuals? Any thoughts? Um, welcome, everybody, to the Walk and Talk. Can you pass me the uh, pad, Rick, if you can? If you can find it. The effects pad. Uh, anyone want to start off? Any hands up from anyone? It's going to be hard, actually, to attract attention, but let's have a look on this. Um, nice one. And the cable as well. Um, okay, we've got a hand up from Paul there. Paul, do you want to come in on this? Yeah, yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. It's, well, I mean, I think generally, just, just actually doing this walking has just, just brought another dimension to it. It feels mm. great to be walking. Mm. Mm and talking and listening in very, you know, just not being sat down. So, yeah. I mean, that, that last image for me is the one I'm kind of interested in. It's like, I think it was something that we brought in is like, how could you, how can you visualize what people are doing collectively? And, 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 and does that become the motivator for someone to contribute to it? Cause I know often, you know, you have these mm. apps that like you can see yeah. other people's stats for running and walking, uh, where yeah. they've been, all that sort of stuff. Is, is there like a, a bigger scale version of that that you can see like we yeah. were talking about the gasometer, like lighting up the gasometer, and it's mm. it, it's got a different colour depending on how healthy you you are. So I think something like that is that is that the thing that will get people yeah. to kind of contribute to being whatever it is the bit that they're doing, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the interesting thing here for me is just looking at the all this movement happening. You know, it is. I mean, it's a very literal thing, but it's literally people active in Pendle, so it has that kind of different. You know, or you could almost project this zoom grid onto the gasometer just to just to show all those people being active, and maybe that would be the idea to actually just literally reflect the activity happening at any one time. What what do other people think about that? Is, would that be an idea? Would that motivate people, or would that just annoy those people still sitting on their sofas? Anyone else want to come in there at this point? Walking people or sitting people actually as well, because we shouldn't, um, some people obviously. Was that a point from you, Alison? Or was that just? Uh, yeah, Alison's got a hand up. Just unmuted yeah. you, Alison. Oh, am I unmuted yeah, yeah. now? Yeah. yeah Sorry about the dog fight before. That's live, isn't it? <laughs> That's the dog fight. <laughs> so what I think about, um, um, to have that kind of indicator, if it was a collective one where everyone's yeah. contributing to Grace, I still want, mm. I think that'll put me up, me off because mm. I'd feel whether I'm fit or not that I'm the least fit mm. of anyone to know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I think if it was a collective, something that mm. we were all uh, adding to, like pendle cy cycles to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, can't man do? Then mm. that might be fantastic. All right. So in a way, we could even sort of map a journey, map that collective. All this walking could be put into a line that would eventually take the whole of Pendle, at least figuratively speaking, to Kathmandu. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the city. I mean, what? I mean, I do think it makes a big difference, and I think it's very obvious just to see the you know, what I can see, because I've got a computer screen and you're on a phone screen, so you probably can't see it, but this collected kind of movement of people actually is a very effective kind of image. What do other people think? Maybe some of the people that are on computers uh, rather than those walking, what do you think about that? Um, and then later on, we're going to get an opinion from Chris's dog. Uh, Anyone that's actually watching this from a desktop want to chime in and, and do, does it make you does it make you feel like you want to get active? Uh, he's not on a desktop, but Shabazz has got his hand raised. Okay, yeah, go on. Uh, that, just want to comment on the collective approach, and I think people who are struggling with 
getting out and doing something individually. And if they yeah. see that as a group, they're going to be contributing to something rather than their own individual fitness being highlighted mm. or being shown up. I think they would yeah. definitely be encouraged and motivated to do something like mm. that. Uh, I'm just in a park here and my attention has been uh, moved from physical yeah. activity to crispy aromatic ducks because there's so many ducks here. Right. <laughs> and I'm getting hungry. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely a collective approach, even if it's a walk or a, a cycle yeah. or something like that, would definitely yeah. get people off, off the couch or off the seats and mm. engage in some kind of physical activity. And yeah. I think, I think like the, the gas summit or even like in a park, you've got so many spaces that you can just light up. And if you're doing a walk around the park and it changes, like something changes color in the park, uh, as mm. a group, you definitely feel more um, motivated yeah. to do something. Yeah. So, I mean, when we're all collected together and we're doing something, it's almost like we're all pushing the same broken down van or something like that. Yes. You know, yes. you see a bunch yeah. of people doing it, then yeah. you join in as well and lend your shoulder yes. to the wheel, so to speak. Yeah. Um, what do other people think about that? Is the collective exercise the way ahead? Is this the motivator? I mean, it's easy to say from those people that are joining. We'll see if more people join as we go along. I don't know. Um, uh, Gail, you've got your hand up. Hi, yeah. So I've said on previous conversations how motivation has really yeah. been my issue because there's so much going on inside the house. Getting out is so hard. Um, yeah. But actually, you know, I, I was determined I was going to walk for the meeting today. And I am so glad I've got out because I'm, I'm on the canal side. Um, yeah. And it's a gorgeous day, and I just feel completely invigorated by, by what we're doing here. So there's definitely something in that collective motivation. Mm, um, yeah. Definitely. Um, and I've just been on a call this morning with the Canal and River Trust. I know some other people on this yeah. call were, were on it as well. Um, and one of the things that they said was that despite the canal running through some of the most deprived wards in the country, mm. it mm. tends to be the people living in those wards that aren't taking advantage of the, the free yeah. and open mm. blue-green spaces that we have here. So, um, you know, definitely mm. encouraging more people to get out. And they did say yeah. the footfall on the canal went up 300% during wow. uh, lockdown wow. because so many other places had been basically restricted to visitors. So yeah. this was the natural place for people to come. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting point there. Of, um, it is a resource. I, I mean, there's a lot of people on the canal. And I'm, I'm wondering if anyone's going to bump into somebody else on this canal. Um, we're actually quite close to canal here where I am. And I'm got you're actually on the canal. The picture behind you shows that you're on the canal. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm actually, I'm actually closer to the Regents Canal. Paul, you've got. Hey, we've got Emma's got a hand up as well there. I think. Okay, sorry, so let's going to go to Emma first. Uh, <laughs> for a while. Go on. Hi. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not in Penda. I'm in Hasling Daily at the moment. Yeah. Doing my dog walk, which I, mean, I caught up with some of the conversations around dog walking from last talk. Um. So yeah, it's something I have to fulfill every day, but I also put enjoyment into that myself. So I play with my dog on the walk and make it enjoyable and fun and have my trees and chest to find me and things like that. So it becomes part of my exercise and it's enjoyable. But yeah, the idea of um, collective motivation, I agree with what Gail said about the fact that, because we've all kind of said we're going to be joining in with the walkie-okie today, because you know that other people are doing it, it kind of gives you motivation to do it. And when you see other people's backgrounds and that they're out walking, mm. it kind of, it's, it's, sort of, it's like a pat on the back, really. Um, it's that like external validation again. Um, that seal of approval, really, from others. And that kind of, that, which taps into like the social aspect of exercise. But um, in terms of uh, the thing about feeling ashamed about, you know, whether you're exercising or not, I do like Paul's idea with the uh, gas tower, but yeah. another idea I thought was, um, was actually putting uh, markers around parks. So, you know, flags that say, you you know, at this point you've walked so many steps, at this point you've walked mm. further so many steps, and that people can anonymously put a little mark on there, yeah. a flag or something in the ground, 
have to say that that's what they've done, but they don't have to write the names on it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They can just put a flag in the ground at that marker. Okay. And then as they, yeah, and it can be anonymous. You can photograph it or whatever. And then as you build up fitness or more confidence, then they can then put a marker in at the next flag and so on. You know, so that can be mm. like an individual achievement for them, but also like a thing that's done collectively. Okay, so um, how I think this collective achievement visualization, collective activity visualization seems to be very popular as an idea. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, uh, for me, it's, I mean, I think uh, there's, a, there's a message in the chat here from Danielle, uh, sadly not able to join on the walkie okey whoops, I just, uh, on the uh. guitar, seeing it from a distance and, you know, I, I, this is the thing, it would, would, is seeing it from a distance a motivating factor? Um, so she feel uh, like she's really missing out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. let's uh, uh, let's try and go to. Are you still there, Danielle? Do, what? I'm here. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I mean, what do you think of it? Does it make you feel like you want to get involved? Does it? Is yeah, it, it does. I have to say, I'm. I, you know, I will admit that I am not. You know, I'm not really into exercise. I'm one of these people that just does not find it most yeah. amazing. I'm not even really a big person who likes to go for walks. If I'm honest, I do it with my kids because it's what you do. But it's not. It's not something that I love to do. But yeah. um, I was I was really wanting to to do it, but I'm I'm struggling to sort my phones out at the minute so mm. I can actually move. Yeah. Well. But yeah, watching you guys there, I just think it looks fantastic, and I think it's probably a great way. You know, I mean, what I do is all health and well-being, and mm. you know, being outside, connecting with like the environment and nature and everything is going to be good for your thinking process. I think anyway. Mm. So. Mm. I would imagine that you're a lot more productive when you're out and about and you're walking as well. Um, well, this is part of the experiment. We will see. Well, it depends if we come up with good <laughs> ideas here today or not. Yeah. Um, we've got a point, I think, from Alison. Um, thank you, Danielle. What's your point, Alison? Two, two points. The first one is I've come back into a building and I have to put a mask on. So there's mm. the freedom to be in outside. Mm. <laughs> it's that, you know, like that last point, if if we're outside and our mental health is 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 yeah. better, then why not invite businesses and and mm. I don't know, organisations to have their meetings outside mm. and join with it. Because I, mean, I I had a meeting walking another one to yeah, and it rose and we really got through a lot. It was absolutely so pleasant. Mm. Say that again. Sorry, we just lost you for a second. Oh, sorry. So yeah. I had a meeting with Chris and Aidy, and um, mm. it was absolutely brilliant. We got through loads. Mm. It was quite bonding as well. You know, it was like nice to be shown around and mm. um, talk about the sites that we were seeing. Yeah. Both. We got through yeah. a lot of business. A lot yeah. was sorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a big advantage to being outside. Are we moving into a more of an outside culture? And is that going to actually get us more active to be more outside? Should we be encouraging people to be working, doing their meet. Everyone's, look, yesterday I was on Zoom meetings all day, um, but I could have been, well, actually it was pouring down with rain yesterday, so it maybe wasn't the best day for it, but could, could it be that actually, we actually perform better outside? Mm. Um, Sophie. I've had to physically raise my hand because I can't uh, access the button. But yeah, I just, I really like, um, I really like that idea that Alison's just suggested. You know, I think like everyone, I've suffered from a bit of a Zoom brain drain over the past mm. couple of months. And I just think sometimes getting out a bit of change of scenery, if you, you know, if you're stuck on something or if you are working with other people can be really good. Obviously, British weather sometimes. Yeah. That's great. But yeah, I just, I love the idea of doing more, um, more stuff outside. I think Paul agreed as well, because I've got, a, I'm sure I got a thumbs up from him. Yeah, there was a thumbs up. I uh, just got my sound effects up and running. So uh, every time I see a thumbs up, I'm going to do a, either a, or a, um, and if I hit if a round of applause as well for everybody. But if I see the applause icon, then I will do the applause. Um, okay, so where do we want to go with this conversation? It seems to be everyone's in a really positive frame of mind. So in my mind, this walkie okey idea seems to be working. But where are we going to take it? Um, is it just going to be mutual self-congratulations, a great idea? 
or I mean, are we going to refine this idea of this projection onto the gasometer or whatever it is, or marks in the park, uh, maybe marks along the canal, how to actually feed back to people what the collective exercise effort is? Are we going to talk about that? Are we going to talk about um, how to motivate people going outside? Paul, I can see you've got your, you've had your hand up for a while, actually. Um, go on, Paul. Where do you want to take this conversation? Oh, we just lost Paul, I think, now. He's just frozen. There's going to be a lot of fr freezing going on. Anyone, uh, anyone want to join in while Paul finds a bit more signal? Uh, Kate, have you got your hand up? I'm going to unmute you to be able to... Oh, Paul's coming in now. Oh. Paul, we... Yeah, yeah. Can We're you hear me? Can you hear me? Go on, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, can you hear me, yeah? Yeah. Um, well, it was, I was just, it was just the point that Gail was talking about and the links to Canal and Rivers Trust, because, uh, I mean, where we are based, we're just on the canal and spent a lot of time on here, and I've done litter picking down here as well. Mm. well and actually, the, Cali, the canal is much more, more used than, than people often think as well, and with a whole mm. group of different people. Um, and I think sometimes that idea of, of, I mean, I don't know whether it's the thing of like where people feel safe going or feel comfortable going, but I think sometimes yeah. the perception that some of these areas aren't safe, safe to go, whereas right, actually right. When, you, when you're there, uh, yeah. they the use more than you think. There's a lot of people about, and whether, whether that sort of contributes to some of those barriers to, about, to be, being outdoors or doing this kind of thing outdoors. Um, mm. I mean, I think Chris uh, tweeted posted some picture about uh, some Tai Chi lessons that were happening in, in the park, which looked great. There were lots of people there yeah. as well. So it's just, I think it's just that, uh, like you were saying, Mikey, that idea about how, how we start to embrace the outdoors more, which doesn't always feel like a bit of a, an English or an older thing because of the weather. We, we've got to find a way of like embracing it more to, mm. to, to, you know, to, to use it in the ways that we want to try and, try and use it like this. Mm. I mean, is it a case of being a bit more flexible when it comes to weather and actually having, in a way, having options inside and outside options so we've always got the chance to go outside? Well, I think it's, I mean, there's an element of like, well, they always say that there's no such thing as... Uh, you, I've lost you again, Paul, but I'm guessing that you're saying there's no such thing as bad weather, just not being prepared enough. So let's maybe go straight on to Sophie. And I think, Katie, you had your hand up, but we'll come to Sophie first. Yeah, I was, I was actually going to say, yeah, the same thing We do stuff about that kind of stuff. I was going to say the same thing as Paul, actually. There's no such yeah. thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Which yeah. I used to be, um, very, you know, if it was raining, I just wouldn't go out. I don't know why. Mm. Um, but, you know, recently I've just tried to... Um, yeah, just tried to sort of brave it really. Even on, I went for a big walk on Sunday and it was absolutely lashing it down, but it, mm. you know, I had a good waterproof on and, yeah. you know, I think sometimes you've just got to try and get out as much as you can when you can fit it in really. You know, I suppose if you're waiting for the sunshine, you could wait a long time for a, a nice yeah. sunny Saturday in Britain. So, you know, and I think even with kids as well, you know, I've took my nephew out on walks when it's been really miserable and, you know, he's had a great time jumping in puddles and stuff. So, yeah. So sometimes it's just about, the the perception the attitude a bit like all of this and about like the motivation so maybe weather isn't as big a barrier as we think um katie did you have your hand up a bit earlier on uh i'm not i'm not sure about that hello can yeah, you hear yeah, me Nico. yeah 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 Brilliant. i've just um bumped into shabazz and anam um mm -hmm. on my way around victoria park Mm. Um, it's actually really nice to get out of the office and just do mm. something different. I feel like for me, um, physical activity needs to be mm. social. So even if it's like yeah. a dance class or something, I mainly go for the social element rather than the actual activity itself. So I think that's yeah. probably the same for a lot of people. And it's been a struggle over lockdown, obviously, because you can just go for a walk on your own. But there's mm. that social element that's missing. So I think this is really, mm. um, this is a good idea to do. Um, yeah. but I'm just thinking out loud, just um, maybe some sort of app that would allow people to uh, connect with friends. So if you come somewhere like Victoria Park, you could see who's in mm. the park. If any of your yeah. friends are here, like, I could see that Shabazz would be here and I can maybe arrange to meet up. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. So an app that actually helps out with those kind of when we're out exercising that, you know, that shows where we are so we can increase that kind of chance meeting. 
Um, some really interesting ideas being generated here and there's some things and it's a bit quite hard for me to read the chat whilst I'm on this treadmill thing. Um, so I don't know, Sophie, if you've got the chat to hand and you could maybe read some of the comments out in the chat because a lot of people are walking and won't be able to see the chat either. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we've got one from Danielle, which is uh, watching you all is definitely watching you all walking is definitely a motivator. So you know, it's clearly uh, it's clearly working in that aspect. Um, mm. Had people bumping into each other, and mm. we've had one here from Amy Whitham just going back to that idea of um, mm. you know walking and meetings outside. Saying mm. you definitely yeah. need walking meetings. I've enjoyed listening whilst walking around now. And please go mm. to another more office space yeah. meeting. Um, but yeah, it, it seems like people are really, yeah. um, are really sort of getting on board with that. And it's not something, I suppose, that commonly happens in, in the UK, is it? Kind of mean, no. but, I mean, you know, when time is precious and you, you know, you're working most of the day, you might be getting home late, you've got kids mm. to look at, you know, I suppose any way you can squeeze in getting outside is, is always good. Yeah. There's a little point there as well um, about uh, adults like playing in the rain as well. Maybe Rick could do a, a visualization of some, older people jumping into puddles, splashing around. Um, but okay, so let's have some of these people that are walking and listening. Uh, is it time to put in your comment? We've got a, there's quite a few people that are on this call. Um, anyone any, that hasn't said anything yet want to jump in here? Um, so, some of those other walkers. And Nam, do you want to say anything, Chris? Um, your, how's your walking experience? There's a few. Alison, I, th I hopefully can hear us and Rosie. Um, but, you know, we are pushing the boundaries of technology here. Alison, have you got a point? Oops, you're muted there. Yeah, go on. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm, I've come across with my phone not being fully charged, so I'm just yeah. charging that up. Um, but, yeah, I, want to, I do want to get outside because the weather's really nice today. Um, yeah. I was thinking about like workplaces really if we can encourage more people to have like more walking meetings because mm. you know a lot of jobs are kind of like Oops. sat still um, and I don't think we really take that into account in jobs yeah. that you know we look yeah. at health and safety for like are yeah. you stuck for you the health of your back and mm. there'll be risk assessments for other mm. things but I don't think there are kind of taking into consideration office work. Yeah. You often at a desk for long periods of time. Mm, yeah. And can we, we encourage more kind of movement yeah. in the workplace? Do we because a lot of people are yeah. at work and struggle to fit things in around that. So yeah. um, you know, can we change that culture a little bit? Well that I mean that's a really interesting point. I mean you you know, talking about this thing, yeah I mean yesterday I don't think my experience was any different to a lot of the country. Just being on a Zoom, sitting in front of the laptop, being on a Zoom meeting, I could have been using that time to move around, and maybe yeah, it would yeah. have helped me concentrate a bit more as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, should that be part of how our, we kind of assess the, not so much the safety, but the health of the work, health and safety in the, in terms of the health of the workplace? Should we be thinking about walking meetings as a, just as a contribution to people's health? Yeah, I think so because the workplace yeah. does take up it does take up quite a lot of people's time mm. in the week and it can be a yeah when you have conversations it can be a reason why people say I can't fit exercising mm. because I'm busy working you might be working a number of jobs yeah um, you know you might have other commitments and it's about I think it's about fitting exercise into places that we're already busy rather mm. than trying to put extra stress on ourselves to do mm. yeah you know more yeah. and more and more with our time. Exactly. Uh, Sophie, you got a point there? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, and this is going to sound incredibly dull, but I listened to a podcast on the radio uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was all about chairs and why people use chairs. And it was, mm. it was, it was interesting because there's been so much research into the fact that sitting down is actually super bad for your motivation, your energy levels, um, kind of thinking mm. outside the box. But, you know, that is how most of yeah. us spend seven hours a day. So, you know... I, I just think that idea of getting out and walking and do you know, I wonder whether it's sort of, um, yeah, just, I think being in, being in different settings can really make you think differently. Yeah. So I, mean, I just I, think there's a huge kind of untapped benefit to that really. Mm, actually. So, so actually your body in a different shape, are we too kind of attached to the chair 
and mm. the seats sitting rather than standing or even you know sometimes i like to do my emails lying down so you know maybe uh we're just too much in that one seated position and we should actually uh change our bodily position and maybe that will actually affect will it affect out the way we work our thinking and i think it's about i think it's about the culture in a workplace as well you know yeah. making things acceptable and making things kind of a new norm because mm. um you know people don't always want to be the first person to suggest things sometimes yeah. in a workplace you don't want to be yeah like sticking an oar in but mm. yeah i think there can mm. be changes in the workplace and people spend a lot of time at work yeah. might as well make it healthier for ourselves mm. i mean i mean let's ask people that have got jobs uh uh, that's not me. Well, I've got a job. I have got a job, actually. But, you know, like a proper job. Could you do a board meeting where you're all, work, where you're all walking? Kim, I see you got your hand up. Just oh. unmute yourself there, Kim. Sorry. Yeah, no, I don't think I'd be able to have a meeting because I don't think I'd concentrate, to be quite honest. I'd be yeah. distracted by my surroundings. Yeah. But I think it'd be really good to have something at work, you know, like a lunchtime work that would be mm. social and you could do it mm. with other people and chat to them from other places. I think that'd really be good. But mm. um, I think it depends what your meeting's about as well, isn't it? Because there is, yeah. that, for me, it would be confidentiality. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you can't, if you're just shouting about stuff that you're, when you're out <laughs> the street, there is a confidentiality issue. Um, so let's have some other points about this. Anyone? Oh, Chris, you've you finished your walk now. You've gone back to uh, the seated position. Um, what do you think about this question about the, are we spending too much time being seated? Is it natural for us to work in a seated position? Um, personally, I love, I, I'm a strong advocate of trying to do the complete opposite yeah. wherever we are. Um, anything, even if it's taking the option of the stairs rather than the lift at work, um, yeah. just the, the little tiny things. Mm. So if I know I have to sit in the, the office and I've got to go and do a couple of, say, a lot of report writing and things like that, I know mm. that. I need to at least make up for it by taking the stairs or making yeah. sure that I get out on my lunch break and have a little mm. walk. So I kind of see it as that I reward myself if I know I've got to uh, endure having to be sedentary for yeah. long periods of time. But like um, Ali mentioned before, we're big advocates of walking meetings, getting out, seeing people, yeah. and just not being sat in the same four walls, which is so refreshing. So yeah. um, it's nice to... I say even that walk there, even though it was only 20, 25 minutes, mm. it just put me in a, a, a better mood now. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like the mood here is, is really good. Um, I, mean, the, I mean, I guess there's two things here. Some people are talking about having the, this as a kind of counterpoint to work, but other people are talking about just really working and working and walking or working and doing other exercise. Shabazz, you wanted to come in. Just want to touch on what Chris Rigby said about the mood. Uh, as soon as we entered the park, the, the Liverpool and Leeds Canal running through the park, and I just stopped and had listened to the water because it's quite a, a strong current today. Uh, mm. And then we've just been walking around the duck pond as well, and it, it just mm. uplifts the mood. And it takes a bit of strain of the, the physical exercise, and you can stop and just enjoy your surroundings. Yeah. And then about five minutes later, I bumped into Katie, and uh and i'm here as well and then it, that social aspect again it kind of takes your your concentration off the actual physical activity moves you onto the social aspect where you're walking at the same time as well so definitely mm. things about the uh, exercise at work or even if it's mm. just to get people out from the public where it doesn't have to target where you're walking or you're cycling the main thing is getting out especially yeah. the times we're going through at the moment where people are alone or they've been uh, isolating at home just to get them out and interacting with people you can do it socially distance so me and Anna and Katie I've just stopped for a break now we've just been having a brief muted conversation uh, just about catching up on the conversation itself but mm. it's that thing where we can still engage while socially distancing so it doesn't mean what we're going through like Nelson's been put into uh, higher restrictions recently but it doesn't mean that these measures are to stop you and keep you at home. Mm. 
you can yeah. still go out and do things. And I think if people know that, there's some confusion about restrictions and what they actually mean for people. So people think, okay, I've got to stay in my home. If I go out, I can be fine. Uh, but really, if you start spreading messages that no, you can still go out, you can still do some exercise, do your one hour, or do your half an hour, and the effect it can have on people's mental states, like just being around the park, definitely mm -hmm. uplifting, uh, changes the mood. But can I ask you, Shabazz, do you think it's realistic that you would, if you were spending more time working while being outside, would you get the same amount of work done? Would it actually, would you be efficient because you'd stop and talk to people or contemplate the ducks in the pond? Um, I don't know, uh, Mikey, because Katie's on the call and she's probably going to say my product productivity is not really high anyway. Right. Uh, but uh, no, definitely, yeah. obviously. There's distractions when you're out. Uh, if it's a meeting where you're just catching up or it's a, what do you call it, a networking meeting is different. Mm. But when you've got a board meeting, when you've got important issues to yeah. discuss, there's the concentration side of things. Then yeah. there's obviously the uh, the confidentiality thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. There are people around you and they can hear things that you're talking about, budgets and finances or people. Mm. Uh, obviously, then you've got to think about all these things before mm. you arrange an outdoor activity. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I guess we're not talking... Uh, Paul, you've got your hand up. We're not talking about completely abandoning yeah. the, the indoor working no, office No, life. I don't think we can. Yeah. Paul? Yeah, I, guess, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about that. I mean, I guess we, you know, I personally, I'm someone that feels fairly confident to be able to go out and just walk on the mm. canal or know that there's some places out there. Mm. But I know that, you know, when we've talked to other people, uh, mm. I know, like, for example, on the Pendle Hill, landscape mm. project when we talk about people just getting out mm. uh, into places like this and we're lucky enough that we have these sort of things on his doorsteps not far from terraced houses for some people it's just it's sometimes still not an option or it's not a they just or like when i know some people have said like well what what do i do when i get there you mm. know so it's i often and i found that really strange to think that we mm. that some people just don't get the idea that you could just go and walk and that's all you need to do that there isn't anything mm. else to get all that benefit and I find that really really hard to understand but I guess that's partly some of the challenges to understand what well, what can try and motivate someone just to do some something simple like mm. uh, taking that first step out somewhere nice to walk or or the fact that if you if you do it somewhere like this it can have all these other benefits and necessarily uh, wherever else you might be walking if that makes sense mm. So it's it's a kind of you know it's I guess it's not in people's kind of in their world so to speak. We've got a couple of hands up anyway. I'll shut up then and let's bring in Jane because you've not said anything yet. Uh, so and then we'll come to Gail. Um, yes, I was going to mention. So we talked about like motivation, but yeah, as Paul mentioned, there's quite a lot of barriers to people. So thinking mm. wider than a work like workplace setting, there's still a lot of barriers to people that just like Paul says, kind of don't whether they don't feel comfortable going for a mm. walk they don't know where they can walk um and we've delivered over the summer we've delivered a virtual john muir award which was for families and the number mm. of families that we've had come back and said they've discovered you know a yeah. park is only 10 minutes walk from their house that they never mm. really knew was there so mm. it's kind of this idea of trying to celebrate kind of local green spaces local yeah. things and making people obviously more aware of, of where they can walk but mm. also more you know more comfortable yeah um, and the benefits that it can have so thinking about as paul said you know that what do you do when you get there we try and so I'm, i work for the pendle hill landscape partnership and mm. we try and integrate that kind of yeah that nature and that heritage side so mm. people almost feel those benefits even if they don't realize the the kind of getting them um and try and kind of make people involved in in different things so it's not necessarily mm. focused on the physical activity of yeah. going for a walk but there's actually lots of other benefits there as well i mean just sort of like you know to i think what you're kind of you know implying there is it's that very very first step off of the sofa and getting out there into the unknown that is the most difficult step in a way yeah. um and that's in a way that's been the theme of all three of these conversations is like okay, you've got a bunch of active people that, you know, oh, they're all great, they're all motivated, they're all positive. But how do we get those unmotivated people, you know, and, um, uh, uh, you know, just to take those first few steps to get them going? Um, and, uh, and I guess, I suppose, my question is, would something like this 
or like lots of visualizations of people just doing, you know, fairly, fairly unchallenging kind of activity. Would that help or would that put people off? I guess it's the question. What about those people that, you know, to, that need to take that first step and it's either uh, out of their comfort zone or a bit of fear, I think Paul was suggesting as well, that maybe there's a bit of fear there. What is going to bring people kind of into this, into this, this group that we've got here, which is, I guess, more active people? What's going to expand the group? Danielle, you look like you're about to say something. Yeah, I don't, sorry, I'm, I'm not very, I don't know how to raise my hand, so I'm having to sort of... Just yeah, like, well, I think well, a lot of people on their phones, it's really tricky to do it on the phone. <laughs> so we're kind of just going to a more visual... And I think Sophie's looking out for those hands, aren't you, Sophie? Yeah, Sophie's on it. She's looking for the hand <laughs> waves. But anyway, go on, Danielle. And we'll come to you, Gail, because I know you want to say something. We'll come to you in a second. Danielle? I was just going to say, just um, to what you've just said, um, I work for Lancashire Adult Learning, so I should have said earlier. Mm. I mean, that is exactly what we do, and that's the problem that we mm. have, really. So mm. we, we bring learning to people in their communities and in their homes for exactly the mm. reason that you've just said. So we work with people who are a little bit scared, you know, whatever it is they're doing, whether they want to get a maths qualification or whether they want to learn a bit mm. of sloppy cookery yeah. or do a bit of exercise in the home, um, they might not be quite be brave enough yet to go out. For whatever reason it is, you know, we work with people who've been going through sort of mental health issues and anxiety problems and mm. they might just not want to go out um, and make that step into like a, what might seem like a college, mm. like a daunting place. So, mm. um, we, we can sort of do, do that for them by bringing it to their local community. And, and with this COVID and, and the whole way we work changing, we're actually doing it into people's homes through the company yeah. as well. And what we tend to find is when, when people have sort of taken that step and done something, um, so mm. for example, we, we have like a group um, of ladies who may, met in a small group uh, to do some chair-based exercise. And it yeah. was the first time a few of them had done anything like that. They were a little bit scared of meeting each other. And then they ended up forming a really good sort of bond and friendship and the group grew. And then they, they carried on meeting even after we'd left because we'll do sort of six week sessions with them yeah. or whatever it might be. And then we help them set up their own little group after that, like a self-sustaining group. Yeah. But if, if you can just sort of get through that little barrier, mm. um, which might be, you know, going to people in their homes, then, then they, they just get that, that confidence after that. So for you, the actual... That actually, if, you know, that first step is the same experience, but you've just literally banged on people's doors and uh, just kind of given, you know, kind of almost jump started them into that very first step. Yeah, we've got, so instead of sort of expecting people to go into a big scary college to do something, um, mm. we'll go to their little community centre down the road where they mm. know people anyway, you know. So if you're like a mum with children and you're off on mm. maternity leave and you don't have your maths qualification, just for example, um, you don't necessarily feel brave enough to go and sit in a college and do it, but you might go and meet all the other mums at your local playgroup down the road, and you're quite happy to go and sit and study for your maths qualification in that little community centre. And a lot of those those sorts of people then go on after that, after they've got, you know, they feel them brave and able to go on and better mm. themselves. Or whatever it might be, whether it's a qualification or whether it's just some health and well-being. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of how we, we sort of meet them halfway. We're like, we're like the little stopgap in the middle before people yeah. feel like yeah. yeah. But it seems like that is where, in a way, the most effort needs to be put. Gail, uh, you were going to say something. Is it, uh, sorry, to I've kind of jumped around a little bit there. No problem. Um, yeah, I just wanted to come back to the, to, to the barriers and linking in with what we said earlier about, you know, it's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Mm. Um, I, I'm fortunate that I was able to pop on a pair of walking boots because I mm. knew I was going to be out for about an hour and a, an hour and a half today. Um, but actually, the people in the most sedentary jobs will probably mm. find themselves with a dress code that doesn't really lend itself to going out and doing anything right. physical. Yeah. Um, and certainly, that is definitely swayed when it comes to women's experiences. Yeah. So, like, I mean, where people are dressing to... to it's not just the chair, it's also dressing to sit down and stay in one place. That's a really good point. Um, and could, could the, oh, you're getting a round of applause there. Um, so could, could we somehow, do, you know, kind of intervene in terms of clothing or like look at people's clothing and how that might affect how people get active, um, as well as the chair. Um, 
Okay, uh, where are we going to go with this conversation, Paul? You made some points about, uh, uh, there's some points in the chat here. Yeah, and we've got a raised hand from Emma as well, who I think okay. is stroking a horse. Are you stroking a horse, Emma? Okay, are you feeling a little horse there, Emma? But if you can speak, that would be good. Yeah, this is my dog. She looks very horse like and long in the face. Um, I'm actually perched on a hill now, uh, which is a regular sort of respite for when I come to work with um, an older friend of mine. Yeah. She's on holiday this week. But just going back to the, again, the social aspect of barking. Um, so yeah, I think you can, I think when you you know, um, you're bound to come from somebody. And I think if I was asking you to talk about the city of barking, um, and whether you can, well, how it needs to be in, of working whilst you work, and you can get paid speaking to people, and I burn a lot. Um, <laughs> it's quite quite often I get engrossing conversations on work. Um, but equally, you know, you don't, if you if you if you you work in bars, well, because you know she must say it's nice to meet with an Am and um, Katie and have that kind of social interaction, um, which I agree with as well. But equally, I can go out sometimes just. I appreciate just having a walk and not meeting anybody because it depends on how people have your day has been. So that can be another a value, mm. a value to walking. You know, the fact that you can go out and just kind of get some space in nature and just reflect on your day or just forget everything and just be in nature and be mindful I mean, in that moment. Really. I mean, how do you feel yeah, about... Just take your mind off completely what you've been doing or any worries. That has that benefit as well, to get away from people. Yeah. And just be so in nature in, if you want so to do that I way. I take it... Um, but... Going back to sort of motivating people to get yeah. out and into their into the environment, I think I still think this idea of sort of like Daniel was saying about knocking on doors and um, you know inviting people out and buddying up with people, you know, like some of us on here are already active and walking most days, um, and just buddying up and getting them to come out with people like ourselves who are confident walkers and just gradually taking baby steps, literally, and getting them used to that. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully and then they can then yeah. sort of invite their own friends and family along mm. to it. Okay, I didn't pick up absolutely everything you were saying there, Emma, because I, you can are... Can everyone called, hear me? I can, <laughs> well, I, I could hear every other syllable, so I think we could sort of join it together. Um, and, um, you know, you're saying it's also, it's not just about meeting people, it's also about getting away from people. Um, but then I guess this is, yeah, as you're saying, this question of like, Maybe if everyone just kind of, you know, felt kind of looked up their more sedentary neighbours and just kind of took them out down the street or something, that might be a way to kind of break that barrier. Uh, Sophie, you got your hand up? No? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it, did you hear more of what Emma said than I did? Because I am also. Um, uh, <laughs> on this treadmill which is it's a kind of squeaking and, and creaking um, a little bit yes you, can everyone hear me i can yeah, hear, we can hear you can now yeah yeah right that's now, better you. i got i got um i gonna get most of it we've also got some um comments here in the in the chat mikey if you want me to read yeah you. uh so we've got a question from paul which is an interesting one um yeah. should, i can't hear you mikey I'm not sure who um, mentioned, but especially like women, women's wearing offices, you know, it does not lend itself to any kind of practical activity, which I could certainly talk about for quite a long time. But yeah, I just, I thought that was quite an interesting sort of provocation from Paul. And there's also something here from Chris as well. How can we empower people at a family street neighborhood level to feel control or a sense that there is value to going out and walking? Can local businesses, councils, leisure facilities incentivize people? Mm. I mean, how, I guess it's a question of how do you articulate that value of going out? We, we all know it, but to somebody that doesn't go out, how do, we, um, how do we articulate that value and say, you know, make it attractive enough for them to overcome this barrier? Um, I think the financial aspect that mm. you mentioned in you know, the first kind of those yeah. uh, photos that came up is just a massive one as well. You know, mm. I, think, I mean, obviously a lot of a lot of gyms are only just reopening, but gyms and swimming pools and stuff, you know, they're not, they're not accessible for a lot of people, yeah. just even on a simple cost basis. So I suppose in terms of like, in, you know, incentives for, you know, for people on low income or, you know, who might be in receipt of benefits, you know, I just think that if those things can be really heavily subsidized and that would really go a long way to um, helping those barriers for people. Okay, so we could do something, is it the cost? Um, let's bring in some some people that haven't said anything 
Yeah, people keep coming and going, I guess, because we've got, they're all out and about and they're in and out of signal. Um, uh, we've got something from Danielle here as well about oh, yeah. the five ways to Albion. I don't know whether you want to expand on that. Danielle, do you want uh, to expand? Yeah, I was just trying to unmute myself. Um, yeah, I was just um, thinking about what you said, um, you know, about how you can motivate people. And it is hard, isn't it? Because I suppose mm. it doesn't matter how many messages the government or the councils or whoever send about keeping healthy. But, you know, the, the five ways to well-being talks about all, you know, the, all the different ways that you can keep keep healthy, whether that be mind or body. And obviously being active is part of that. So I don't know, it's just a thought, you know, about as well as your body, you know, it keeps mm. you mentally healthy as well as physically healthy, really, as well as good for you, isn't it? Just to get out and... Um, so, I mean, can you just, if, can you quickly just go through the five ways to well-being? Uh, I know you're going to ask me that. I hope I can remember them all. Okay, well, I um, mean... Yeah, so it's it's uh, to connect, so to yeah. connect with people, obviously, and, and have relationships. Um, yeah. Be active, um, to learn, and to, oh, what are the others? I can't remember now. On well, we've certainly got a flavour with those, you know, there's some really good points you know about you know about social connections about learning um about you know and i think it's something that's come up again and again in this chat which is about this kind of so the social element uh to motivation even i think last week it was it wasn't just about you know a good social in a way it's about a peer pressure kind of social as well um uh, there was a point i think from sophie Sorry, it was just um, those sort of five ways to well-being. The other ones are uh, to take notice and to give, and I suppose the take notice one's quite a, a big yeah. thing. Well, getting out and about, because you do get mm. in a bit of a different headspace, and you, I guess, notice things like ducks if you sort of hungry, I guess, like Shabazz yeah. was. Um, or, you know, even just, you know, some of the um, projects we've got going with PH, PHLP at the moment, you know, are all yeah. about kind of, you know, really taking note of things that are in your natural environment, and mm. I just... In terms of mental health, that can just be a massive, um, you know, a massive thing to, to really, really support positive mental health. Yeah, so taking note of things, that's a really, I mean, do, do we think from walking, in the experience of walking, we notice different things? Do we actually, and, and will it help, I mean, going back to this idea of walking and working, or walking and meeting, would it allow us to notice different things than we would notice if we were sedentary that's a question going out there to anyone if you would care to answer it uh even with a don't know that's fine um but what do people think of what this idea about noticing things may if no one answers it i'm gonna have to go to shabazz who's the one who noticed the ducks in the park for the first time uh shabazz come in on, what do you think about this noticing thing do you notice different things when you're walking Are you muted there, Shabazz? Uh, yeah, Mikey, I noticed a few things. Uh, yeah. One is that Anam and Katie stopped walking. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. The cheating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the best. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah. But we definitely, we were just we stopped and we had a chat about the change in the park over the years. Because me and Anam are both from Nelson. Yeah, uh, and we're just saying how there used to be more flower beds and garden beds, mm. and only through doing this walk we have started noticing things like that. Uh, I work in the park cafe. I've been doing it for two years, and I've not noticed. And mm. today was the first time we noticed. But if you if you if you have local parks or local nature areas where people can go to, even to take some photos or spot wildlife, where you are getting out and about, because I mean it's going to be difficult to motivate groups or people mm. by different levels of motivation because people are at different levels of fitness and um, uh, their mentality is different as well, whether some people feel they can't do it. But if we have different events targeted at different groups, and then we can see what kind of people sign up to these kind of things and which, what works as well, because at the moment we, we don't know what works. So even gyms, they have people signing up for a full year or two years sometimes, and after about a month or two, people sign off or want to cancel their contracts. Yeah. Uh, I like the point about setting up and motivating people to have groups and then leaving them uh, to deal with things themselves. So once they establish, they can run things themselves. And during this uh, phone call, mm -hmm. uh, me and Anam just talked about mosques and churches where they could have their own walking groups. Mm -hmm. And then so often they could have a big one where it's a mosque and church coming together 
and yeah. phone based interfaith dialogue, uh, showing mm. community cohesion and getting yeah. out there and walking at the same time. Do you th I mean, do you think that walking would change the dialogue uh, if you've got that interfaith dialogue and you're all walking? Yes. yes, I think then when you're walking, you don't have to talk about faith all the time. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, it, obviously, people are more to them than their faith. You've got your lives, you've got your families, and that gives you more things in common as well, so you find more commonalities yeah. Yeah. Uh, rather than just talking about faith all the time. So definitely, I think if you're out and about, if you live in the same area and you go to the same park, you'll mm. find something else to talk about. But if you're in a mosque or a church or a community mm. centre mm. and you, you're having an interfaith dialogue, you're more or less going to be talking about the same things. Yeah. So, uh, in a, I mean, it's a very literal thing, but you're all walking in the same direction. Yes. yes. Uh, I, th I see, Jane, you've got your hand up. It's a great idea from Shabazz there. Um, mm. But yeah, just linking back with my background is, is more the nature side of things. Mm. I was on a, a webinar earlier today, and the mm. number of in, the kind of net increase in people responding to surveys that about getting active outdoors, but actually what mm. actively wildlife watching has increased massively. Um, and again, it's this take notice things. Those people yeah. won't be, they won't be wildlife experts. They won't be animal experts, but the feedback that we've got is that particularly from lockdown, people have had more of a chance almost to notice whether it's the birds in the garden or, yeah. you know, their local nature reserve. Mm. And I think again, it's sometimes it's, it's getting people interested in things they never thought they would be mm. interested in. So it's giving people the opportunity yeah. To learn whether it be nature whether it be social heritage whether it be just um that idea of kind of meeting up socially with different and new people um and then you turn it into again it's not the focus isn't necessarily on the physical activity it's on you know something else but the the benefits are there from a physical and mental health well-being yeah. point of view. i mean it seems that, that at least the people on this call are taking that idea in a very holistic way that you know the men mental physical activity the noticing and learning and social activity are all kind of really wrapped up into one, you know, into one phenomenon, really. Um, but, you know, I mean, we've obviously, I've been doing the, not just the Together Active Pendle, but lots and lots of Tokiyoki sessions all through these months. And I think quite often we focus on the negatives, but I think noticing stuff, um, is a really, really important positive that people are definitely noticing more, be it nature or be it, you know, things that they don't normally pick up on. Um, so that is another positive, as well as the fact, I suppose we can do this walkie-okey. Although it looks like it's only at this point, we've not got that many walkers left. I'm even sitting down, actually. I'm pretending to walk, but I'm actually sitting down. Um, We've only really got Gail walking now. You're the only, you're the last person standing, but maybe Paul's still walking because I know Paul's got a bit of a kind of endurance thing going on. But um, you're the only one that's walking that we can see, Gail. Maybe because you're the, you're, you're in, everyone else has had a little perch and has moved to the noticing kind of phase. Um, so well done, Gail. Paul, are you still walking? Oh, we've lost him to the hills um yep no more walking going on uh okay so uh, well maybe we'll just shift into the sort of noticing phase away from the walking then um looks like you've even stopped now gail but i think that's also another interesting thing is that when one person stops walking and that you know and especially if somebody notices it then it's harder for everyone else to carry on but when we're all walking we're all going together. So that's also another interesting phenomenon. So where do we want to go from here? I'm getting, I'm getting knackered. So uh, yeah, Sophie, Sophie, uh, come in. Me, I was just going to chip in with a comment uh, that's come yeah. from the chat from Alison, uh, which says, I noticed so, Alison Whitaker, um, yeah not Cooper. Um, yeah. I notice so much more when I'm walking in areas that I haven't walked, uh, walked in for a while. Mm. Um, which, yeah, I just, I, I agree with that. You know, I, I moved yeah. somewhere new not that long before lockdown, although I had been living there for about eight months. And it's, um, yeah, it, it's funny. You don't actually realize often what is on your doorstep. And mm. I think that's positive that I, I found in this obviously really difficult time. Yeah. Oh, but Gail's got a hand up as well. I'm just yeah. going to Gail. Gail, yeah, well done. You, you've got the, the Stamina Award here, the Persistence Award. So well done. 
And oh, I've, I've picked the wrong time to start speaking to you because I'm walking up a hill at the moment, so I'm a little bit breathless yeah. at the same time. Um, but just to come back on what, what you're saying there is, you know, I, I love the heritage that we have in East Lancashire. And so I really enjoy walking in uh, mm. built up areas um, mm. with a lot of architecture to them, as well as the rural spaces. Mm. Um, and one thing I used to do when I was childminding some years ago was we used to go in search of the blue plaques right. that uh, marked out the heritage points around the town. Yeah. But equally, I went into Accrington, not so before lockdown, and um, I hadn't been there for years and years and years. And it was just a complete eye opener because it was this brand new place mm. with different buildings. And I was thinking, well, that would work where I live. That would be a mm. really good idea here. So in terms of inspiration, mm. you know, going to new places definitely ticks my boxes. Uh, sorry, I, I'm so out of breath. <laughs> well, that's okay. You're you're definitely carrying the torch here, I have to say. But um, just in terms of like that idea of of kind of exploring your own area, and it's certainly something that we're looking into down in London quite a lot at the moment. This idea of like just literally exploring what's on your own doorstep. But is there a way, you know, to almost have your antenna to actually notice new stuff or look at? your environment in a new way where you discover these things is there a, a kind of mindset to do that or is it just about getting out there how do you notice these new things because i guess there are alison you've got a point so there's um there's something called um it's like a, you can do like sound walks where you kind of Mm. I went on a walk recently where we just did a walk in silence and it was kind of like a sound walk and the person who led it like was reading poetry around mm. when they were doing the walk but I wonder about some of the different sounds that you can hear when you are out because it's not always it's not always nature and it's not always bird song or I mean on the canal where I live there's geese all the time making a racket yeah. but sometimes it's quite nice to kind of just sit back and just kind of take notice but I think there's ways you can learn to do that really because sometimes I think we're so busy in our own kind of minds as well mm. um there is there is something I can't remember the full details of it but I think there's kind of a museum mm. of walking um the and they're museum doing of walking walks. wow they're doing some sound walks at the mm. moment and I think that's yeah. coming up in September um because people everyone's just so different you know everyone's kind of gets interested in different things like i love i love identifying like plants and weeds when i'm out walking right like i know all the different mm. i know a lot of the trees and i can yeah. like you know when i was walking on the canal just before i noticed some of the honesty mm. um flower it's coming into the seas with yeah. beautiful round seed kind of heads Mm. Um, and I love learning about kind of like the rose bay willow herb and like hawthorn trees and all, all the different things around but not everybody's the same so we've got to find all these different routes that can work with different personalities yeah because not everybody is interested in kind of sound or is attached to that or not everybody will be interested in plants but I suppose there's got to be different routes I, I love going on walks in the in the hill on the hills where I live and I love kind of like keeping an eye out for different things in nature. Yeah. Whether it's like spotting a deer or if it's like mm. a bird or, you know, different things. But that's personally what I like doing. And yeah. but I sometimes think we've got to find different things that do motivate people to get out. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard though, if you're walking the same route or in this, you think it's the same place to actually really be observant and notice what's changed or what's new um uh yeah but the sea but the seasons are always changing you know nature never stops it's always changing and that's something that you know you can notice the the times of day mm. and the different plants that are around yeah um so even though the walk can be the same walk i think there can be different things on a walk mm. um you know in a semi-urban environment as well because even things like you know, like buddleia that just grows anywhere and mm. there's different different things. But 
But I think we've got to look at people as real individuals and see that not one thing's going to motivate everybody. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not hugely motivated by, um, you know, by exercise as something that kind of like, you know, pushing into a different kind of, you know, with running or, or whatever. That's not, never really it, it's not about how far you go or how many calories you've burned or how many steps you've done and all this kind of stuff. No, for me, it's more yeah. like investigating mm. different things that gets mm. me interested in life. And yeah. I think we, like somebody else said earlier, you've got to think about what motivates individuals. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe make plans around that to start with rather than looking at exercise first. Mm. Look That's at a really good point. That's a really good point. I just want to just while... Uh, between people, uh, Rick's done another visualization here of the walking board meeting. In a way, though, this looks a bit more like that kind of thing where the exec is kind of like kind of chirping out orders as they go along, you know, walking from one place to another. Um, what would the is this how you picture the walking board meeting? Could it even happen? Um, some great visuals today from Rick, even though he's he is sitting down rather than walking and visualizing. Maybe that's a bit too hard. Rick's already been for a run, um, he says. Okay, so uh, where do we go with this conversation? Uh, we're, we're kind of moving into the home straight, so to speak. We're turning around, we're seeing the spires of home in the distance as we return back to where we started from. Um, uh, Gail seems to be the only person that's still active. I'm absolutely exhausted now, I have to say. Um, so where do we want to take this conversation? I see, Sophie, you've put in the, the Museum of Walking there, and I think that's a really interesting link. Uh, and thanks for that, Alison, because I think that, that really is um, something that I think we can all have a look at and get some inspiration from. Uh, where do we want to go with this conversation as we move into the home straight? Any comments, thoughts? Paul, are you still with us? Are you out? Gail, back to you again, yeah? Yep, so I am on the home straight as well. I'm about yeah. six minutes walk away from home. Yeah. But I am worried that technology is going to fail me because despite coming out with a full battery, uh, yeah. my phone has not fared well for yeah. a full hour of Zoom on the move. Yeah, yeah um, I, know, I know where you're coming from. Uh, I was concerned initially that if I wanted to be on a video call, that would be an yeah. issue for attention. Um, <laughs> It's not been quite as bad as I thought. Uh, I definitely do take in less when I'm out talking rather than on my own. Um, yeah. But the actual the holding the device up for this length of time yeah. hasn't been quite as traumatic on my arms as I expected it to be. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. But I'm so, not sure whether doing a Zoom call for this length of time is practical. Mm maybe we need to uh, invent new devices and maybe that's maybe something for your last visualization i feel really sorry for rick now i'm exhausted and rick has been for a run and he's done all, but maybe we need to invent some kind of technology where you can sort of have a a kind of, i don't know how it would work a kind of a phone holder for those walking zoom meetings so you don't have to hold the phone up all the time how would that work um that's a, that's a question, a technical question, really, but a, a, a question of innovation as well. You know, we could make a fortune off of this device if we get this up and running. Um, okay, I sort of feel like um, it is a little early, but I'm exhausted, so maybe it's time to get those those final thoughts in. Um, so, uh, Alison, are, are you saying something there? Oh, no, no. Uh, so let's yeah, let's just get maybe the final thoughts for this session. Um, there are some technological boundaries. We are pushing the boundaries of technology here, but I think in a really good way. Um, what do people think? I mean, you know, just summing up, maybe we can just quickly, if you don't mind, Rick, go through the visuals that we've done so far today. Um, just to recap, and we'll no, Rick's in the, in the middle of doing the next visual. Um, but, you know, we've talked a lot about this kind of social effort, social effort of motivation, the idea of um, of you know how to overcome the barriers we've talked a lot about um you know combining exercise with all the other points about well-being and that it is actually a complex web they've talked about noticing stuff talked a little bit about the technology we've talked about changing the work culture 
I mean, I think there's a really interesting point about work wear as well and about office wear um, and also about, uh, yeah, sitting down. I mean, actually in our studio, we don't sit down all the time. We've got a very tall desk so that we can stand up here and there. Um, so should we be abandoning the culture of sitting down? And that was also a really good point. So many good points in this session. So there's, we've been through a lot. Um, and I guess I really want to go around and, and kind of ask people, uh, yeah, what is, they think the most important thing is and where do we go on from here? Because last time in the last session, we came up with the walkie-okie idea, uh, which we put into practice. Um, what are the ideas for the next session? So there we go. Final thoughts for people. Who wants to go first? Chris, you've not said that much. I'm going to pick on you because uh, you've been listening. I, I've seen you there. Uh, and you're out initially with the dog, but uh, you're sitting down there. I'm, I'm, I don't, I didn't expect to be this knackered actually. Go on, Chris, give us some final thoughts. Well, yeah, the, well, firstly, um, he's absolutely knackered. So he's, yeah. he's <laughs> so I've, I've pushed him too far, I think. Um, but yeah, I've actually just written some notes as I've yeah. in. Um, it's been yeah. some really interesting points, in particularly around workplaces. Yeah. I thought the conversation around that was really powerful. Um, in regards to do our, our human resources departments, um, do we need to look into things like um, yeah. know, physical activity, the walking, yeah. a bit of flexibility and maybe a bit of control um, back onto their employees to give them the freedom mm. to um, mm. maybe mm. do a walk or trying to, again, go that to point of incentivizing them to, to stay physically active because it's beneficial not just for their employees, mm. but for them as well. Um, yeah. As it is. And mm. then I think as well, I think it's been really positive as much as the technology has been a, a bit of a challenge. I've had to come back because, again, felt yeah. a bit low. But mm. the positivity around, um, I think Shabazz alluded to it as well, about being out for that time was just... I felt so much more creative, motivated, yeah. um, being out in a different space. And I think that's something that us as the Together Active Pendle and I know the Together Active Futures teams um, are very keen on trying to promote these walking meetings where possible. But if other, mm. again, workplaces could do that, that'd be great. And then yeah. the final one really was about, I think, um, maybe Katie or somebody mentioned about the uh, like digital apps as well. Mm. Um, and whether or not they're appropriate for obviously for everyone i think as we kind of we come into this age of technology um and more people being used to the technology um more people using apps is something which would be again something definitely worth exploring and seeing if that's um mm. worth doing especially if we can and do it in a, a green open space and um i always like the, the pokemon go i know this is a final thought based on that yeah. I, don't, I know yeah. I'm not saying much like it, but yeah, it's turned into a big one about getting mm. young people out through letting them go out and catch yeah. Pokemons, but why can't we do that as adults? Um, mm. I know there's a few different ones out there, um, mm. apps where you can go and collect prizes, um, mm. but do we need it on a, a locality level in Pendle? Yeah, Could a local Pokemon. Uh, so if you got your hand up. Yeah, it was just kind of in response to what Chris said about young people. I mean, I was just mm. thinking about how ingrained this idea of you know, if you're working, then you should be sat down. So like you, Mikey, I've not, I've, I've almost took my uh, chair out of my studio now because mm. I've got a really high work top and I've found that I work better like that. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because even when you look back at school, you know, mm. as a child, if you're working and you're sat at a desk, you know, and that's, mm. that's how you yeah. do a majority of your lessons. So I just wonder, you know, how, how early on does that actually get ingrained in people that, that mentally mm. they're connecting those two things? And mm. And yeah, I think that things like Pokemon Go, I remember uh, doing a lot of teaching around the time that was po popular and it was fantastic because it was just getting, and adults as well, it was getting people mm. moving around. So I think, you know, things like that can certainly um, have an impact, whether it can sort of have a long-term impact, I suppose is a different thing. But yeah, I just wonder whether, um, yeah, that link needs to be broken earlier on in life really, because we get yeah. to and we all sit at desks all the time. Yeah, are we sit? Are we kind of kind of cultured into it from school to sit down when we're working, when we're thinking? Does sitting thinking lead to a particular kind of thinking as well? And that's another element, you know. Um, okay, other final thoughts. Anyone else want to chime in with a final thought? Jane, Danielle, Alison, Jane, go on. 
I think, yeah, I think the work thing is something that I'm very lucky that I work well, pre COVID work most of the time mm. outside. And even if we're in the office all day, we mm. always go for a walk at lunchtime, no matter what the weather. But yeah. so that's a really interesting concept for me to think more about that. But I just think um, accessibility, inclusivity, um, mm. you know, from a, an accessible point of view, not everyone want, can walk five miles, not everyone, you know, wants to walk five miles. So it's kind of thinking about that aspect even from a you know even from a working point of view obviously people mm. in offices all have different types of lifestyles and mm. and kind of different expectations so it's making sure that yeah it's kind of as accessible and inclusive as possible okay so you know i guess you're in a way you're at the cutting edge by having this kind of culture of walking already instilled there um, I mean, I work in a, I work in the landscape set, uh, the yeah. environment sector. So yeah. yeah it, but I mean, are you in a way? I guess the question is, are you evangelical enough with that? You know, to try and get other people that you maybe, you know, that work in different departments or you know, try and sort of spread that culture of walking and working. Yeah, probably probably not enough. But I think again, mm. since since lockdown, I mean, I'm not back in in an office setting yet. Um, mm. but all the meetings I've had that have been face to face have been walking meetings. Oh really? Wow. I've not had an office setting to, to bring people to. And that's now my first question is, can we meet outside? Um, so yeah. It, yeah, that, I mean, it might change because of everything. Um, you know, if people aren't back in office settings and things like that, um, mm. it is a different kind of looking at it. And some people won't be going back to offices. Um, you know, we've heard about mm. kind of companies with people working from home more. So it's trying to, like you said, kind of integrate that more. Yeah more than norm okay that's excellent stuff any other final thoughts paul you're back online i don't know if you heard a lot of the chat where we went to with the chat um well, we're just gathering final thoughts now i'm i have to say i'm knackered now i i i've got a whole lot of work to do the rest of the day i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do it um i've really fancy a pint of lager at this point but anyway uh paul have you got a final thought Hey, well, yes, yeah, so, yeah, sorry, my uh, battery ran out and I just realised I'd walked much further than I realised. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm echo, I guess, yeah, I've missed some of the last bits, but I'm echoing a lot of the stuff people are saying. I mean, you know, I think we need to do much more of this just in terms of how we work. And again, as Jane's mm. saying, I think we're trying to rethink how we operate. We do have a building, but actually mm. do we rethink how we use this building and actually do much more as a team out and about or mm. from home in that, in that sense, really. But I... I was, I mean, the thing I was, I was kind of interested in, I know this is a bit longer than the final thought, but um, we've recently just been out and about doing a little bit of face-to-face -face, uh, and spent some time at Morrison's. And I remember having two, uh, two really interesting conversations with two taxi drivers that I was telling Chris about. Um, mm. and, and even one guy, he was talking about how, you know, he'd been a taxi driver for a long time and he'd worked out, obviously, that his health was getting worse and worse. And he made that decision within his own working environment where he took an hour out of his mm. getting out of his car not in there and mm. walking around just to help his own thing and we started talking about well is that is that something that could be incentivized through uh mm. through the taxi uh, taxi services and the and yeah or even through the council and their licensing thing you know how can we just add those little things in there mm. to encourage people to to allow other people to do it really so that that was just something i was i wanted to chip in at some point but disappeared yeah and that's an interesting point could taxi drivers you know could somehow be subsidized to, to leave their cars and go out for an, for an hour. Mm. Um, but I guess, especially with the, I guess I, with the Uber app, it follows you around anyway. So you could tell if you're walking or driving. Um, uh, but I don't know if that's something we wanted to, you know, do a time with Uber or if it's a bit more, if that's a bit too controversial. What's this latest visual we have got? Oh, this is the, this is the device. Um, yeah. Thanks Rick. Um, this is, could we would we all have devices like this to do our walking meetings? Um, is that as Rick come up with it? Come up with our finally we're going to be millionaires, Rick. Um, Rick's not looking too impressed with that idea. Oh, we've got a round of applause for you, Rick. Um, okay, so yeah, um, so we, we we're still being creative here, and in a way, I guess one of the elements I'm trying to get from the final thought was we came up with this really good idea of the walkie-okie in the last session in the final thoughts. And have we got any thoughts about how to do the next session or how to move on? Uh, anyone else want to give a final thought? Uh, Gail, you're back back at home, back connected to power. Uh, Alison and Rosie, we've not heard that much from you, a little bit from you, Alison. But uh, if you, 
now there is still a chance to chime in there. But Gail, you want give, let's have your final thought. I just thought, seeing as you name checked me, I'd, uh, mm. I'd take up a little bit more time. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. It would be great if we could do something for the next meeting that did involve being outdoors, whether that's, mm. I don't know, a parking pendle um, mm. where we can yeah. get contributions from, from passers-by as well. Mm. Yeah. Should we be out in the park next time? That's a good one. Or maybe we could actually be in the canal just to make it a bit different. Uh, either on a boat or uh, maybe we could all be rowing. Um, I don't know. That's just a thought. Um, uh, probably not making that much sense. Any other final thoughts from people? There's a few that haven't given a final thought. Have you got a final thought? Alison, final thought? Yeah, I did. I have enjoyed um, doing the walking and being on the Zoom meeting as well. So it's the first time I've done that, and I did. I did think it was. It felt quite refreshing, actually. So um, that's something that I'll kind of think about. I suppose, like I've been meeting a lot of people socially, having walks as well. Mm. So as well as like work side of things, you know, like meeting. Like actually, instead of meeting people maybe in a pub or maybe in a cafe, mm. I've been meeting them out walking. So maybe that's like a work on a social. You know, like meetups yeah. could be a little bit more outdoors, and yeah could think about that okay so walking and not just walking and working but walking and meeting i mean shabazz was talking about that we've i think we've lost a lot of people to phone to phone battery capacity yeah i think the uh, technology side would have to kind yeah. of be a bit more peg so I, that's what happened to me as well yeah um, so I, i've come back um home as well yeah i've i've yeah i've got a huge huge not that i'm going anywhere so i'm connected to plugs anyway but i've got a huge battery to connect up um fi final final thoughts from anyone else um danielle did you give us a final thought do you want to give us a final thought um, yeah i've just popped it in the chat i've just said uh, final thought it's more productive to have a yeah. meeting while you're walking so that you're working mm. while improving your health it's combining the two together so just mm. a logical sense yeah Although it does make me very hungry. I'm going straight to the chip shop after this, for sure. <laughs> um, I don't know how that fits in. Um, any other final thoughts? Final, final, final thoughts? Sophie, have you got anything final to add? Thanks so much for, uh, for managing the chat. Um, Alison and Rosie, if you're there, um, is the last chance for a final thought. Um, we've, we've got Emma back. Final thought. Emma, we're just about to close this down. Ideas for the next one? We're talking about going into the park if it's possible. Um, I'm, I'm going to take that as a no. So maybe it's just time to, to leave it there. Um, it's been a really interesting and inspiring session. Probably the most tiring Tokyo I've ever done. And, and I've not really been putting that much effort in either. I've probably done, you know, probably burn the calorie of like half a sandwich or something like that anyway um thanks everyone for joining it has been and you know hopefully we'll see you in the park next time any final final comments we have a round of applause from paul um any final thoughts paul or like you know practicals about when the next one is or you know where we're going to go with this um, well, I mean, I guess um, I know Gail's, Gail mentioned about there we are we are desperately trying to find a way to get back out into the real world face to face, really. So we, um, with hopefully Mike and the team, we're going to come in yeah. over, uh, and in September we'd like to do something mm. in, in a park where we can invite yeah. more people, get people passing by as well, um, and we've got a way that we can do that uh, safely. Um, and hopefully we're also uh, we're going to be out and about talking to people individually. So uh, Alison and Emma, who are on the chat, have, uh, have got a bit of a mobile vox pop unit that we're we're hoping to be going out with uh, as soon as we can under these restrictions uh, to talk to more and more people. So, so look out for those mm. things in, in the face-to-face -face world. Great stuff. Well, I think we're going to end it there. We're going to play the theme music. I'm going to try and turn it down slightly. And uh, just say thanks, everyone. Give you all a wave and well done. And well done to those people that are going to have to watch this. Thanks to the people on Facebook, actually, that are watching. But some of the people that were walking, hopefully you made it home. Um, after running out of batteries. Thanks everyone. We will be back and hopefully we will be in the park. We have got a way to do it with social distancing. Thanks everyone. Thanks to Rick for some great visuals.
this time and we'll see you next time. Oh, hello. Is that everybody gone? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know if I was talking. Yeah, I stopped, I stopped the, uh, the stream when we did our goodbyes. Yeah.